I'm litty. I know that you're trying to go be. Better run up the cash, you love to spend. Better kill it and did it again. I'm with it, you know I'm down to win. What about it? Talking a few hundred thousand yards, you just on your fifth grand. 
Run it up, 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 count it up. Ayy, hundreds and fifties and twenties, no fives and no singles, don't count on them. Ayy, she wanted like me, cause I blame she can not count on him. She tried to be nosy and hit up my ex, she like, girl, you can count on him. Hey, hey, we need more, tell him we need more. Much appreciated, Coach. Smack dab in the middle of I-295 that encircles the city of Jacksonville in Northeast Florida. There's a good look at TIAA Bank Field. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game. Evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Cleveland Browns and the Jacksonville Jaguars. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Come on out here, come get some. Come get some. Mayfield now. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, touch and time here, critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. And he'll give it here to his running back. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. The Browns send out their punter now. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. Now here's Ross. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And it'll be Jaguar football as they take over deep in their own territory. Set, ready? 30 base. On first down, Marsh got a man open. It's Ricky Seals-Jones. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville in a first down. First carry for Nick Chubb. And he is going to lose yardage here. A full five-yard loss that time. It's going to make second down pretty tough. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. Looking to throw on second down. Marsh looking long for Thomas. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, and have them back on their heels. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. 61, matchbox lights. And it's 
And now a timeout called defensively. By the Browns. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Got it. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Let's go, Let's go, Big series right here. We gotta step it up. 57. Hey, team six. Team six. Let's go. From the gun. Marsh, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The number one pick, Miles Garrett, coming in to drop him. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Twelve yards on the return that time. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and ten. So much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. Now they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. They'll run it now. Out of the gun. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Good. 180. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Third and long for Mayfield. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he can only manage to take this thing to the 38, well shy of the first down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks, don't let them get there, and they rallied and made the tackle. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. John Ross, the one he was looking for, but it'll be second down. On the Here's second and 10 now from the 29. And I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Rush in. Rush in. 
Rush City. Hey, Fox Truck, Fox Truck. 51 the mic. Come on, I'm on. A run for Nick Chubb. He'll have a first down past the 40. Pushing his way through. A big play that time out of Chubb. 46 yards on the ground. And look at that. I'd say somebody's already in mid-season form here in game number one. Doesn't need a whole lot of carries in the preseason, does he? He needs to get the ball when it counts. And when it does, he makes it count. Now Chubb, and he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. A good response by the defense, sending them backwards after that huge gain last play. Ready up. Leo, Leo. And watch that, and watch the ball. Why, 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 get one. Bam, bam. Let's go. They go with Chubb on second down. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It's a loss of two, now third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Third and 15 here after the first and second down plays went in the wrong direction. from the gun. Marsh is going to fire one deep over the middle. And it's incomplete, almost intercepted. He had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. It brings up fourth down. Now McManus will line up for the field goal. It'll come from the right hash. It's a 47-yard attempt. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that will tie us at 3-3. So he splits the uprights, and has to be a nice feeling. Right when it left his foot, knew it was good. Yeah, just like a good three-point shooter in basketball, right? Release the ball, fall back on defense without even looking. You know it's going in the hoop. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. To throw Mayfield. He'll have a first down past the 40. And finally down at the 41-yard line. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. The beauty of route running is it doesn't matter what position, everyone's doing the same thing. In this case... Tight end, selling the vertical route. Get the defensive back on his heels. Break off for the corner. With good timing, you get a completion, as we just saw there. And that one blown up quickly, as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Good opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the sack earlier. Now a tackle for loss, another tackle for loss. He's really making it tough on the play caller, though, isn't he? Because it's one thing to try and adjust when a guy is disrupting your running game. But when he's messing up your passing game as well, they may have to devote at least a second guy to him to try and keep him away from their plays. Let's go, you tighten up. Hey, check right, check right. Watch it, Hey, Delta. Get that ball. Get that ball. Regular, regular, regular. You don't want, you don't want. I got you. Now on second and 13, Mayfield finding some room. And oh, he caught it up. And the Jags grab it. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. In our meetings this week, they kind of tipped us off. They wanted to play ultra-aggressive, forcing fumbles. They just did that right there. They took it to the next level, didn't they? You're exactly right because everyone talks about being aggressive on defense and tackling well. But they were talking about getting after the football, making sure the ball was stripped out each and every time they lined up someone to get them on the ground. And the adjustment working early. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. Back to throw. Marsh. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. 
What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Hey, Sam off! They give the chum out of the gun. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Ready, Try ready. to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Hey, high seven. That's the end of the first quarter with the score tied three. Ready. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. Watch the boot. Watch the boot. Two jet bombers. Two jet bombers. From the gun, Marsh, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Miles Garrett, his second sack of the night. Brandon, what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer, they would just tell you, just cover people for me, just long enough for me to get there, and that's exactly what happened on that play. The Browns drive about to get started. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Hurry, hurry! General West! 53 to Mike. 53 to Mike. Hey, watch the screen! Watch the screen! Watch the screen. Mayfield to throw it. He's going to look deep down the field. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, but they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Hey, I'm 33. Switch. Switch. On third down, Mayfield. And that will be incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. turn that time 18 yards and the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10 ready, ready. the Jacksonville ready, offense go. set to begin their go. next drive go begin, begin, begin. check 15 check 15 <laughs> They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Six 
To throw on second down. Marsh. And he fires one incomplete. He was looking for John Ross that time. And it's third down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. The Jaguars on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is going to be third and 13. from the gun. Marsh nowhere to escape and he goes down. Miles Garrett bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. The Browns drive about to get started. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. On second and nine, Mayfield. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there trying to take a shot, but it's third down. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest of starts. No, I would agree with that. But if you're a confident quarterback and to play that position, you have to be. You just act like there's something wrong with the wind currents or something wrong with the ball. <laughs> it is not you. Keep throwing. That timing usually develops. The Browns on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and nine. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurry movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. Play fake, Mayfield. He's going to wind up and air it out. But when this ball's tipped and intercepted, picked up by Leighton Vander Esch. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37 yard line. Oh, and that's a nice job defensively to get a piece of the football. He's going to pop it into the air, and then it's the tip drill. And good concentration by him to react to it and pull in the interception. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun, Marsh is going to float this one deep right side. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail, second down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Throwing again. Marsh. And he gets it to his running back, Nick Chubb. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. So the face mask, quite a blessing there as they'll start out of harm's way with a first and ten. Operating from the gun. Marsh, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. 
Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. Yeah, blink of an eye. That happened fast and a big sack. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Hey, hey, look at me. Go, go. Watch 84. Watch 84. Watch the safety screen. Now Chubb running right. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. The Jaguars on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 16. From the gun, Marsh. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack. Back at the 47 yard line. Miles Garrett. Make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. The Browns drive about to get started. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. That goes for a gain of 31. Just like that, out of danger and up past the 40 now for first and 10. Now they try the right side here. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 14 yards and it's a Cleveland first down. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side, the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. Staying on the ground, this time it's Smith. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. That's their second, so they'll have one remaining here in this second quarter. We'll be right back. Now Mayfield. Man open, that's Kiki QT complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 17-yard line. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts. And with that, they're now out of timeouts and still plenty of time remaining here in this second quarter. A first red zone opportunity for the Browns thus far. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. Now a handoff working right. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. A great effort there with his first career touchdown in his first career game. And the Browns have taken the lead. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is now 10 to 3. Joseph now to kick this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Ready. 
Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Our score, 10-3 to three with two minutes remaining in quarter number two. you that coming up at halftime will hand things off to the coach Jonathan Coachman in Orlando he'll have a look back at a very intriguing opening weekend in the NFL throwing on first down Marsh nowhere to escape and he goes down this offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush we've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Hey, hey, Wood. Second and 15. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. for Jacksonville. Something to watch here in week one of the season, tackling. Because you and I both know that in the preseason, a lot of these guys don't play a whole lot. Plus the intensity and the speed really ratchets up on opening week. Switch, switch, switch. They run again on first down, Chubb. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Six man. Check curls, check curls, check curls. 57. Let's go. Looking to throw on second down. Marsh, he'll air it out into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-round pick, Demarius Randall. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. He was trying to hit Thomas that time. When you're in man coverage, you have help over the top. You become a much more confident defender. Trail the receiver and know that someone over the top can make a play. And that's exactly what happened here. The free safety coming up with the interception. Following the interception, Mayfield. It got his man complete. 30, 20, 10, and all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. A big play there. 79 yards. And the Browns are able to strike quickly for six. Well, this is exactly where I expect teams to take a shot. Right after a turnover, you count on the defense being a little bit jumbled coming out on the field, maybe catch them back on their heels, and that's exactly what they did there. They threw it downfield and really created a big play. Yeah, you said jumbled. They were the definition of jumbled defensively. One play and into the end zone. Extra point right down the middle, and the lead is now 17-3. Joseph now to kick this one away. 
This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. The Jacksonville offense hey, set to begin their five, next drive. Five. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lick your wounds at the half, hey, and see if you can come it. up with a strategy to play better in the second. But there's also something to challenge in your offense right here. You know, hey, guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes these quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence that borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some dutch. Yeah, especially maybe want to look at some safer routes after the interception he had that ended their last drive. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. Here we go, here we go. 18 Gator. Hey, team six. Team six, man. To throw on second down. Marsh going deep downfield for Ross. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Looking to throw. Marsh is going to float this over the middle, deep. And that is incomplete. So we reach halftime here at our first Monday nighter of the season. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Got it. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is. Right? I don't want to create more. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Miles Garrett able to record his fifth sack of the season. And that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Back to throw. Marsh, and he whips that one incomplete there. The target that time, Michael Thomas, and it's third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. So coming up empty here to start the third quarter. Already two scores down. Got to be careful. Yeah, I did notice, though, that the captain of the defense patted the quarterback on the helmet on his way out, pretty much letting him know, we know the pressure's on us. We're going to go out there and try to hold serve for you while you figure it out over here on the sidelines. Good. 
The Browns drive about to get started. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got the lead. Yeah. We got the, de we got the, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. The last run got six. Hey, now line, second and four. Line. Now they try the right side here. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. time to the tailback and yeah, boy he is very close to a first down but from where they're spotting that football he's going to be a foot or so short but we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game he's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. Tried the hard count, but to no avail. Trying to do anything to get them to jump off sides and pick up a first down easily. Instead, it goes against them. The Browns send out their punter now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. Now this is fielded in the end zone. It'll go as a 50-yard punt, but the net just 30. And the Jaguars will take over at their 20-yard line. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drive should deserve to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Second down and inches. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 47. And a terrific return as he takes this thing all the way down near the 20-yard line. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. to him just inside the 15 even after the strong run we just saw they're able to corral him quickly defensively despite the blitz they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain the disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there and he'll give it here to his running back and he is met quickly in the backfield down he goes folded like a lawn chair an interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field 
despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Mayfield from the gun on third down. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Damian Ratley there to make the grab. And the Browns take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. Still plenty of time left in the game, but now starting to pull away a little bit. Get some breathing room with that one. And I don't want people to think that NFL locker rooms are cookie cutter, that everyone's saying the exact same thing in every situation. But I do know that all 32 teams have an emphasis on starting fast. Game, the you know, second half, no matter what, with his first five minutes, first three, whatever, this was a big score to start the second half. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and ten. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. The open man is Westbrook. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well, the great the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds. Because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? He's going to loft one deep left side here. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Picked up by DJ Reed. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. The Browns drive about to get started. There have been no struggles here for this crew. I mean, they were up double digits at halftime, and they've just expanded that here in the second half. And it appears there are no answers from the defensive side. I think right now, if I'm the coordinator, if I'm down on the field, if I'm wearing a hat, I've already thrown it. If it's a visor, it's sailed, right? My game plan is down by my feet right now because nothing I've drawn up appears to be working. Well, he's going to have to find something right now to stop this offense. Now they'll run it on the toss. And this will be a pickup of four here, up to their own 20. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. From the gun, Mayfield. The open man is Smith. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. And this is why trying to cover the angle route is so difficult. Anyone playing the linebacker position, when they see a running back out of the backfield widen because he heads towards the flat first, oftentimes you widen too much and overcommit. He cuts up inside, and that's what we saw there. A nice pickup for a first down. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. And again this time to the tailback. He'll get three up to midfield. They try to quick hit her inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Let's make these babies cry all the way back home, y'all. Let's make these babies cry. And he fires one that's intercepted. He's picked off at his own 47. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. <laughs> On 
on here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And this is up and good. That'll make it a score now of 24 to 10. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And following the pick six, and they've decent field position and throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this run. And I think all he's... And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. Wow. That ball is not free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like... It's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. This is the tight end to Joku. That one good for 26 and a first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, He's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. Mayfield now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Now a handoff here to his running back. And some room to work. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. A great play there. Making quite a splash with his second touchdown in his NFL debut. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Extra point splits the uprights, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Joseph now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. They trail here by 24 points. Got to get going soon, you'd have to think, as they come up first and 10. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. It's a gain of 35. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. and 10. Marsh. There goes a deep ball. End zone. 
And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Hey, 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 we got three down, three down. To throw again, Marsh. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Just nothing there again. He's been sacked multiple times. We've seen the interceptions, of course. Uh, he's really been through the ringer, hasn't he? And what we've seen is a defense that's well-coordinated. The front and the back really in sync. The front putting on the pressure. The backside being ball hawks and picking passes off. Bravo! On third down, Marsh. Well, he's going to go for it all. And incomplete, almost intercepted. Had a great shot of picking that off in the end zone. And now fourth down. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. Critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Hey, lock it. Check, 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 check. You go tight. You got tight. You got tight right there. Go. Mike, Mike 51. Mike 51. Watch the out. Watch the out. On fourth down. Marsh. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by Demarius Randall. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration, not a good play. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. And he'll give it here to his running back. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's got to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brandon, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him by now, and here's the thing. Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football, and that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Let's see what you got. A first down carry for Smith. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Mike, number 53. Mike, 53. Coming to you. Coming to you. I got it. Now a handoff looking right. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. Toss it to Smith. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. He'll give up six yards there on the loss, and it'll bring up fourth down. Mike, 
The Browns send out their punter now. He's been terrific so far. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. At their own 20-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they do the interception and finish off the drive, it does them no good to go back and say, well, you know what, a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Greedy Williams picks it off. And they will finally get him, but not until he's all the way down inside the 15-yard line. The interception woes, they just continue to mount. He's thrown five picks. At this point, you got to be thinking, is it something between the ears? I think a confidence hit does occur once you start getting those numbers up there a little bit. But as you and I both know, it's not always just one guy's fault. Maybe somebody ran the wrong pattern. Maybe some balls were tipped. It could be so many different things. Bottom line, though, it comes back to the guy throwing them. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Now they'll try the jet sweep here. And a little bit of space there. Takes it inside the five to the three. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. touchdown but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one they only got two but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal time they get him behind the line he has elite instincts from his linebacker spot he's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage coming up to the line and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning here we go now with smith and there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield it'll be a loss of a full three yards there and it also brings up third down Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got it third and goal here as they try to finish off their victory. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. 
The kick by Joseph is good. And that will extend the lead out to 24. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Joseph now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down.